Who has the most upside of any young player on the New York Rangers? We debate with a twist on today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 892 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And so, as I just mentioned, want to go ahead and talk about uh, upside, long-term upside, as far as some of the younger players on the New York Rangers are concerned. But we're going to do this with something of a twist because I came across an article on NHL.com you know, we talk a little bit of fantasy hockey on here every once in a blue moon, and I figure we can do that today. The article focuses in on the top 100 players around the NHL who are 25 or younger who have the most value as far as a fantasy league keeper is concerned. And if you're unfamiliar with what that term means, uh, it's kind of basically just what it sounds like. You play in a fantasy league, and certain leagues allow you to keep one player or multiple players from one year to the next. And this article is ranking the players from around the NHL in accordance with that, in accordance with, you know, fantasy value. So it's a little bit different than maybe uh, just value overall, you know, taking fantasy out of it. But I thought this would be kind of a, a fun uh, little slant on the, the whole equation here. And we can go ahead and, like I said, talk about um, this list that NHL.com put together. Going to go ahead and uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, I will share the uh, the, the article. I'll, I'll put that on the screen right now. And for those of you on audio, uh, don't worry. I'll walk you through it, uh, and you'll be able to see pretty easily. Hopefully, everybody can see that who's watching on YouTube. Uh, maybe we just zoom in a little bit here. That might help a little bit there. Okay, awesome. So uh, top 100. It's actually uh, the top 110 players, really, because they rank the top 100. But then at the very end of the article, it mentions like, oh, and also you might want to pay attention uh, to these 10 players. So basically, we're looking at a list of the uh, top 110 uh, fantasy keeper players in the NHL right now. And the caveat for this is everybody has to be 25 years old or younger. And Connor McDavid, for example, is 26. So he's not going to appear anywhere on this list. A couple of Rangers do appear, though. And I figured to kind of kick things off here, we'll go ahead and take a look at this article. And this article, by the way, uh, collaborative effort from Pete Jensen and Anna Dua. And again, it's an article that appears on NHL.com. But to just go through the list really quick here, number one, you've got Connor Bedard listed as the number one uh, fantasy keeper in the NHL right now. I feel like that's a little bit high for him. I wouldn't put him quite at number one. I understand all the hype and all the, the hoopla and the fact that he was the uh, slam dunk number one overall pick this season and certainly seems to have a very, very bright future in this league. But I would counter with the fact that he has not yet played an NHL game. So I can totally understand top 10. I can probably even understand top five. Number one might be a little bit of a bridge too far. I mean, there's no sure thing as a sure thing when it comes to, you know, drafts and players that, you know, haven't even played uh, their first NHL game yet. And that really applies to all sports, but certainly hockey as well. But anyway, you got Connor Bedard at number one. I'll kind of just run through the top 20 real quick here. Number two, Kale McCarr. Number three, Austin Matthews. Uh, four is Jack Hughes. Five is J Jake Ottinger. Six, Jason Robertson. Seven, Brady Kachuk. Eight, Matthew Kachuk. So that's interesting. Uh, Brady ahead of Matthew there, despite Matthew's just absolute rampage in the playoffs this past season. Uh, nine is Tim Stutzla. Ten is our buddy Adam Fox. Going to talk about him in just a minute, as well as the other Rangers on this list. Eleven is Elias Pettersson. Uh, Twelve, Rasmus Dahlin. Thirteen, Tage Thompson. Fourteen, Quinn Hughes. Fifteen, Matt Boldy. Sixteen, Maurice Sider. Uh, Seventeen, Miro Heiskanen. Uh, 18, Cole Caulfield, 19, Matty Beneers, and number 20 is Jeremy Swayman. So, uh, yeah, no issues really with that top 20. I mean, Tage Thompson's interesting because uh, he was almost looking like, you know, somebody that wasn't going to live up to the hype, and then he had just a phenomenal season this past year, and obviously he's jumped up the list quite a bit. But to go through the Rangers that are on this list, I did just mention Adam Fox at number 10, and no surprises there. I mean, he's got to be, you know, certainly I would say at least within the top 10. If anything, maybe he's a little bit too low here. Uh, Kael McCarr, number two. Adam Fox, number 10. They're always going to be linked together. And as far as defensemen are concerned, uh, they are the top two ranked defensemen on this list. And again, to me, the top two 
premier defenseman in this league. I mean, I know Eric Carlson won the Norris this past year, but obviously he's not 25 or younger. And I think all around game, I know this is a fantasy ranking here, but all around game, I'd still put McCarr and, uh, and Fox ahead of Carlson. Um, but yeah, I mean, with other Rangers on this list, we're going to be talking a lot about upside and potential and, uh, can they take a leap forward this year? Adam Fox, he's already there. And again, there really isn't all that much of a discussion to, to, to be had here. I mean, I could look at it and say, okay, Adam Fox is number 10. Uh, should he be above somebody like Tim Stutzla? Should he be above somebody like, you know, Jason Robertson? Again, it, it's all... It's all relative. Anybody could kind of make that case, but uh, I can't go crazy about any of the players ranked ahead of Adam Fox here. And again, this is uh, fantasy related. You know, it's, it's not just real life uh, value. It's fantasy value. So Adam Fox, obviously, look, if you're in a fantasy hockey keeper league, yeah, I think he'd be a great keeper, uh, you know, for just about any team. Obviously, you got your top defenseman for many, many years to come if you're lucky enough to, uh, you know, be able to draft or hang on to Adam Fox in a fantasy league. Uh, to keep the list going here, I'm kind of just going to scroll through. I'll go somewhat gradually. So, again, anybody watching on YouTube can kind of see anybody else that's uh, on this list here. We got quite a ways down to see uh, the next New York Ranger, and that's going to be at number 54. Uh, Philip Heedle is listed as number 54 in terms of fantasy keepers. And this is an interesting one because Philip Heedle, you think about the kid line, and I feel like, you know, going into this past season, if you had to rank uh, those three in any kind of an order, you'd probably have Philip Hedl as, as the third one of Kako Lafreniere and uh, Hedl himself. But uh, with the season that Hedl had, mini breakout this past year, playing mostly in a bottom six role and uh, almost doubling his previous career high in points for a season. Obviously still very young. Philip Hedl is still only 23 years old, which is crazy because it feels like he's been here for a long time. And really he has. He debuted when he was 18. But um, yeah, Philip Hedl, I mean, again, you, you can... I mean, should he be number 53 instead of Jacob Chikrin? Should he be number 52 instead of Pierre-Luc Dubois or 51 instead of Noah Dobson? You can make that case, obviously. But, um, you know, this this feels about right. Being a little bit Ranger bias, I, I almost feel like he should be a little bit higher as he continues to grow. I mean, a lot of these players are still growing. They're all 25 or younger. But he could have a bigger role this season, potentially playing in the top six, potentially getting more time on the power play. So, yeah, Filipino, whether you're talking fantasy or real life, uh, somebody that... You know, as far as players 25 or younger, has a lot of value. One of the better players uh, that fits that description in this league. To keep everything rolling here, we go down to number 64, and we've got Keandre Miller at that spot uh, for the New York Rangers on this top 100 or top 110 list. And, you know, again, it's the, the discrepancy between real-life value and fantasy value. Uh, for fantasy value, yeah, number 64 for Keandre Miller, that's probably about right. For what I would call real-life value, I get the feeling he'd be quite a bit higher on this list, one of the emerging young defensemen in this league. He hasn't been perfect since he debuted three years ago, but you know what? He's been pretty darn good. And with all the swings and misses that the Rangers have had uh, early in the draft over the past however many years you want to go back, it's nice to see them hit on one. Uh, I've mentioned this in the past as well, but um, they had three first-round draft picks that year, and Miller was really the only one that they hit on. He's the only one that's still even on the team. Um, so obviously that's a good thing for the Rangers finally, uh, hitting on a first round pick and, uh, making good on a first round pick. Um, as far as, you know, him being 64 here, again, a lot of this comes down to, well, really it all comes down to fantasy numbers because it is a fantasy hockey, uh, keeper article. That's what it is. But if this was real life value, he'd be quite a bit higher. The fact that, um, he's a defense and that probably hurts him for a fantasy, uh, related list such as this. Because, you know, defensemen, they're only going to get so many points. I mean, I think Miller has more to give offensively. Would not be surprised to see him put up career highs uh, offensively across the board. We'll see if he gets some some power play time as well. I could see him uh, maybe being out there for the second unit. But uh, Keandre Miller, nice to see him on this list as well at number 64. And again, I'll keep scrolling down here. We'll go through the list uh, so everybody can see that happens to be watching on YouTube. I'm not going to read the whole uh, top 110 here, obviously, but we'll go all the way to the bottom. There we go. And number 91, the last New York Ranger on this list, is Alexi Lafreniere. And this is interesting because I get the feeling, you know, not that he had quite as much hype as Connor Bedard uh, currently does, but I get the feeling Alexi Lafreniere would have been quite a lot higher on this list before he actually played a game in the NHL. The reason he's this low is because, you know, the offensive numbers to date and just his overall play 
has been at least somewhat underwhelming relative to the expectations that were kind of thrust upon Alexi Lafreniere uh, coming into this league. But at number 91, I mean, look, he has a chance to be a steal. Uh, I've mentioned this in the past as well. But, um, you know, obviously, we're kind of looking for that hop, skip, and a leap forward instead of just baby steps forward. We've seen all the members of the kid line get incrementally better pretty much every season. And then Philip Hedel, that mini breakout this past year, we're looking for similar things for Alexi Lafreniere and uh, certainly Capo Caco as well this upcoming season. And Lafreniere, just number 91 as far as fantasy players who are 25 years old or younger. Yeah, I uh, think that's too low. Obviously, I'm going to say that. This is locked on New York Rangers after all. But um, I, I think that has a chance once again to uh, you know be quite the steal if you're able to get Lafreniere I mean, if he's number 91, 25 or younger, then certainly in a fantasy draft, he's going to be there uh, pretty late in the draft. And if you're able to get him, you know, in the 13th round, the 15th round, whatever it might be, however many rounds that your league does, uh, I think certainly at that point, it's definitely worth a flyer uh, for Alexi Lafreniere, especially when you consider that, as we just mentioned with Heedle, there could be more ice time, uh, more of a chance to play in the top six, more power play time. It feels like, Alexi Lafreniere will probably at least get some opportunities this season that maybe he didn't have quite as many of uh, in recent seasons, mostly been on the third line and somewhat understandably so. But I get the feeling that, you know, with all the kids, this could be the season where they really take off the training wheels. And um, again, 91 just feels too low for Alexi Lafreniere. So as far as young Rangers who were left off this list, uh, the name that immediately springs to mind for me is Capo Caco. He is not on this list. And, you know, for somebody who is coming off of a lot of career bests, a lot of career highs, somebody who's gotten better every single season since he's been in the league, and again, somebody that could be ticketed for a bigger role with this team, and just, you know, more more of a confident player, more comfortable in his own skin out there, it would seem. Uh, Kako is somebody that uh, could be the ultimate snub of this list when it's all said and done this upcoming season uh, for the New York Rangers, once we see what he can do. I, I feel like this could be Kako's year. This could be the year that he finally uh, takes that giant step forward that we've all kind of been hoping for the last couple of seasons here. And again, he has gotten better and better, but we're looking for that that big jump, that big rise uh, from Capo Kako this season. Another Ranger that I thought was uh, interestingly omitted would be Braden Schneider. And again, this is uh, a fantasy list, so you can kind of understand why he's not here. Um, but... If this is a real life list, again, you know, Brandon Schneider, he's not somebody that's like a household name yet. Not a lot of people uh, that are fans of other teams really know about him or maybe, you know, maybe they've heard of him, but they don't know a whole lot about him. Uh, Brandon Schneider, again, one of the more steady young defensemen in this league. And um, again, if this was a real life list as opposed to a fantasy list, I think certainly uh, he would have a spot on this list, uh, you know, at, at some point, somewhere in the top. 100 or 110 here. But yeah, I thought that would be kind of a fun exercise. Just kind of look at, uh, you know, fantasy dynasty keepers and, and specifically which Rangers are on this list and where they rank and just kind of share my thoughts about that. You know, maybe at some point in the off season, we'll just do, you know, the top 100 players under 25 and we'll take the fantasy equation out of it. But I'm kind of in a fantasy sports mood right now. Obviously we got the NFL season coming up and uh, we've got locked on New York Rangers. That's going to be happening. We're going to have our fantasy draft as well. Um, you know, right before the regular season starts. So definitely looking forward to all that. And again, just kind of a fun exercise to, you know, do with you guys right here. Uh, we're going to stop sharing this screen here for those of you that are watching on YouTube. And we are going to also um, let you guys know about today's sponsor, and that would be FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, New customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, we just want to go ahead and thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And for the everydayers, uh, definitely stick around. We're going to be next week concluding our best and worst case scenario series where we take a look at uh, the only line left, the only uh, three players left on the Rangers are Alexi Lafreniere, Mika Zibanejad, Capo Caco. We're going to talk about those three as potentially the Rangers' top line for this upcoming season. 
Again, I will eventually do a deeper dive on line combinations and defense pairings. Right now, we kind of just did it that way, just to do it that way. Also, we had to wait for Lafreniere's contract to be signed, which it finally has. That's at least part of the reason why I play him on the first line. But I would love to see that line back together. And like I said, we will talk about them uh, next uh, next week. For the time being, though, I want to talk about a couple of uh, hires by the New York Rangers, a couple of uh, in-house moves, a couple of people kind of switching uh, roles in many cases being promoted, I believe in at least one case kind of being demoted, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, this was per an announcement from Chris Drury. The Rangers have made the following hockey ops hires. You've got Ryan Klo. Uh, he was promoted to co-senior advisor to president and general manager. You've got Angela Ruggiero, Ruggiero uh, hired as hockey operations advisor. Uh, Christian Hamora hired as skills and performance development coach. He replaces Mark Siaccio as the skills coach for the Rangers. Speaking of Siaccio, he's still there. He was named the prospect development skills coach. So he's just in a different role for the Rangers. You've also got Paul Mera uh, hired as player development assistant. Andy Hostler was named the head athletic trainer. He replaces longtime Ranger trainer Jim Ramsey. I still feel like we don't have the full story there as far as what exactly happened, but uh, be that as it may. Uh, Andy Hostler, the new head athletic trainer. We've also got Brandon Rogers, named senior sports therapist. We've also got Kayla McAvoy, who is the sister of Charlie McAvoy, hired full-time as assistant sports scientist. And Catherine Yates, hired as manager of performance data insights. So I wanted to kind of hone in on a couple of these, these names and the people that are in the more prominent roles of the whole bunch here. We can start with Ryan Klo, uh, 40 years old. He played in the NHL with the Sharks. Rangers and Devils. He was the number 175 overall pick in the 2001 draft taken by the Sharks in the sixth round that year. So being the odds to uh, even make it to the NHL and had a nice career for himself. He was with the Rangers as their hockey operations advisor beginning in 2022. Now he gets this promotion. And again, he is the co-senior advisor to the president and the general manager. And it's funny, you type his name into YouTube to kind of, you know, I wanted to look back and see, okay, you know, did, did he do anything like big in a playoff series or or what happened? Um, the first, four of the first five videos that come up are all fights that he was in. And one of them was actually against Paul Bissonnette back in 2011. So I like this guy already. You know, the fact that he uh, dropped the gloves with Paul Bissonnette. But you have Bissonnette going after uh, Vlasic and Klo jumped in. Uh, Klo was on the Sharks at the time. Bissonnette was on the Coyotes. Klo started strong in this fight. Bissonnette kind of took over in the second half, but nice to see him standing up for uh, a teammate there. Uh, so for Klo, played seven and a half seasons with the Sharks, half a season with the Rangers, two seasons with the Devils, 491 total games in the NHL, 112 goals, 197 assists, so 309 points in 491 games, and also another 46 points in 70 playoff games. And for anyone wondering, that half season with the Rangers occurred in 2012, 2013. He played 12 games, had three goals and five assists, uh, and then one assist in two playoff games. As far as his coaching career is concerned and his post-playing career, uh, he started in 2016 as an assistant coach with the Devils, uh, spent two years there. He was hired as the head coach of the Newfoundland Growlers. That was an expansion team in the ECHL. Uh, he stepped down in 2019 due to continuing health issues related to his concussion history. And you hear that, and it's, it's a little bit scary. So um, hopefully everything is, is okay now. And uh, Ryan Klo can obviously... Uh, you know, do his uh, his new duties to the best of his ability. And um, yeah, you hear anything about concussion history. I mean, I don't know that that ever really goes away or or the fear of it, you know, causing problems ever really goes away. So certainly all the best to him. Uh, also want to talk here about Angela Ruggiero, uh, now 43 years old. She is new to the Rangers organization and she will be the hockey operations advisor. She's a former Olympic defenseman for the United States, a uh, four-time Olympic medalist. Uh, she won the gold with the United States in 1998, uh, won the silver with the U.S. in 2002, won the bronze in 2006, and then won the silver again in 2010. Uh, she is the fourth woman and the second American woman to be inducted into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Uh, this happened in 2015. Also a member of the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame class of 2015. Had just an outstanding college career at Harvard. Uh, was the captain there for her last two seasons. Won the Patty... Kazmaier Award as the top women's player in college hockey in 2003-2004. During that season, she had 25 goals and 30 assists in just 32 games and also won 
the NCAA championship with Hartford, or yeah, Hartford, Hartford. She won it with the Hartford Whalers. She won it with Harvard in 1999. And then after retiring, became a member of the International Olympic Committee until 2018. Obviously, uh, I've never met her, but certain people, you know, you read their resume and you just can't help but be impressed of all the different things they've done uh, as players. And um, again, I don't know her personally, obviously, but this seems like somebody that just might be one of those hockey lifers. Obviously, there's quite a few of them kicking around the NHL. You know, they play in the NHL, they end up becoming coaches, and uh, that seems like it could be the case here. And uh, again, these all seem like good hires. There's one more um, person that I want to talk to talk about here, and that's Paul Mara. That name might sound familiar, and the reason for that, first and foremost, he had a long career as an NHL defenseman. Uh, he's now 43 years old. He was actually drafted number seven by the Tampa Bay Lightning in 1997, played for the Lightning, Coyotes, Bruins, the Rangers, uh, the Canadians, and the Ducks. 734 games, 64 goals, 189 assists, so 253 points in 734 games. Also played in 33 Stanley Cup playoff games, uh, three goals, four assists. He was with the Rangers for three seasons, starting in 2006-2007 and lasting until 2008-2009. Obviously could chip in offensively, um, but also, you know, a hard-nosed defense and somebody that would drop the gloves and uh, stand up for his teammates. As far as uh, his post-playing career, he was the assistant coach on the 2018 U.S. Women's uh, National Hockey Team, won a gold medal there, uh, and then also was named the head coach of the PHF's Boston Pride, and he is currently the head coach with the most wins in PHF history. The PHF, the Premier Hockey Federation, formerly known as the National Women's Hockey League, the NWHL. Um, they uh, sort of rebranded, I guess you could call it, about a year or two ago. Um, but yeah, obviously, uh, Mara had a lot of success there. He was also the first coach in PHF history to win 50 games, and he got to that mark in November of 2022. So uh, interested to see Paul Mara back in the, in the fold, and um, well, again, they all seem like good hires, you know, lo looking up uh, research on all these people really and finding anything that you could find. Uh, all these hires seem like they were done with a purpose. And obviously they're all, or some of them are new. Some of them have been promoted and uh, we'll obviously give them a fair chance as uh, Ranger fans always do with everybody. So um, yeah, we'll uh, keep everything rolling in just a second here. I want to do one last thing for today's episode. We did an episode. It's the second most recent episode before this one where we took a look at what I consider to be the Rangers' top five rivals uh, currently. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to actually do it in that episode. I had a couple of honorable mentions uh, written down, and I wanted to run through them quick, but that episode ran pretty long on me, so I figured we could just save it for another day. Today's that day. I'll recap the top five really quickly, and then we'll dive into a couple of quick honorable mentions and uh, do a quick rundown, perhaps, of the uh, remaining New York Ranger free agents. Uh, I don't think any of them are coming back at this point, but... We'll run through the list anyway, and I suppose never say never. We're going to do all that good stuff in just a second. All right, so Rivals of the New York Rangers. To kind of recap the top five episode, or the the a couple episodes ago when we did the top five, number five was the Islanders, number four was the Canes, number three was the Caps, number two was the Devils, number one was the Penguins. And obviously, everybody's got their own top five, and you can go ahead and uh, leave your own personal top five in the comments of this episode, or go back and catch that episode if you want to hear my thoughts on what I believe are the top five biggest Ranger rivals. A couple of you guys mentioned in the comments, some other rivals that um, were not included on that list. I had a couple of them written down for the honorable mention uh, portion of that episode, and we're going to just dive right into that right now. So in no particular order, one of the rivals that I got four written down here, one of them is the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, obviously, there's a lot of history there, and these teams have gone back and forth over the years. Been a lot of nastiness, a lot of fighting. One of the more modern, I mean, I guess even this is about 10 years ago now, but one of the more modern examples, the Winter Classic, that game was an absolute battle. Rangers were down 2 nothing, came back in 1-3-2. to two. Uh, Lundqvist stopping Breer on a penalty shot with about 30 seconds or so to go in that game. Uh, you had, if you want to go to 1997, that was a rough way for that Ranger run to end because for that core group, they won the Cup in 94. That was basically their last chance. They made it to the Eastern Conference Final before losing to the Flyers in five games. Uh, the Rangers, though, in 2014, beat the Flyers in seven games in the first round. And that's also the season that the Rangers ended up making it to the finals. That was back and forth the entire way. If I'm not mistaken, the Rangers won every odd-numbered game of that series, and the Peng or the, the Flyers won every even-numbered game of that series. And then a uh, really modern example, how about a couple of years ago when... Uh, 
Chris Knobloch was up coaching the Rangers when the Ranger coaching staff had COVID. And the Rangers squeaked by the Philadelphia Flyers by the final score of 9 to nothing. It was actually 9 nothing after two periods. I think the Rangers kind of took the foot off the gas a little bit, uh, but just an absolute embarrassment and just a uh, complete butt kicking. Uh, another honorable mention, we're going to go with the Boston Bruins. Uh, I mean, this is always chippy. In recent times, the Bruins, it seems like, have had this belief that they could kind of push the Rangers around a little bit. And as recently as like four years ago, maybe that was true. The Rangers have uh, kind of struck back in recent seasons. I mean, this past year, the Bruins did sweep them, but the Bruins beat everybody this past year. Two years ago, Rangers did a lot better against the Bruins, playing them a lot more competitively, winning some games against them, and uh, you know, obviously matching them in the physical department and not backing down at all. Uh, anytime Marchand is out there, you know something's going to be happening. Uh, we had uh, an incident, I believe it was... Was it last? Yeah, it was last year. Pasternak took out Lindgren on a hit that I was not really a big fan of. Uh, you also had that incident a couple of years ago where Marchand was chirping Panarin. They're both on the bench, and Panarin takes off his glove and uh, pegs Marchand with it. So that was pretty funny. But um, yeah, the Bruins, I mean, they were close to being in the top five, as all these teams were, but I had to cut it off at some point. So um, yeah, Bruins, an honorable mention. Another honorable mention, we're going to go with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, the temperature has really risen in this rivalry last couple of seasons here. You go back to the Eastern Conference Final, and really any time two teams meet each other in the Conference Final, that kind of becomes, I think, a little bit of a rivalry going into the next season because you're so close. You're right there on the doorstep. You got a chance to go to the Stanley Cup Final, and um, obviously that was no different, Rangers versus Lightning that year. Very chippy, a lot of chirping, a lot of back and forth. You had Lafreniere and Stamkos uh, dropping the gloves and fighting at the end of game five. Uh, opening night this past season, I thought got kind of crazy at times. The Rangers won that game, uh, but that was back and forth and a lot of uh, chirping back and forth. There was also the game last year where Ben Harper and Corey Perry were going out at the entire night. I mean, just, just constantly finding each other and mixing it up. I, I think fighting at the end of the game. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, that that's become a heck of a rivalry, more modern rivalry, but a rivalry uh, nonetheless. And then one more that I want to throw out there, got to get at least one Western Conference team on this list. And a couple of you guys pointed this out in the uh, YouTube comment section, for the top five episode that I did, the Calgary Flames. Now, before this past season, they wouldn't have been anywhere near a list like this. But when you see what happened in the two games that they played against each other in a relatively short amount of time last year, each team won one game. Um, but... Those games are crazy. I mean, show me a better regular season matchup than that first Rangers versus Flames game. Uh, Trubo was hitting everybody. He was getting attacked afterward. He had to keep defending himself. Um, just a lot of hitting, a lot of nastiness, uh, a lot of momentum swings. The lead changed hands a couple times. We end up in overtime. Crazy scramble at the end of the game. Lafreniere buries uh, the game winner. And um, yeah, the Rangers won. But I mean, coming into this season, show me a more anticipated out of conference game, not just for the Rangers, but any two teams in the NHL, then Rangers versus Flames. There were people that weren't even fans of either one of those teams saying that that first matchup was the regular season game of the year. And I can't really argue with that. It's a spectacular hockey game. They really had a little bit of everything. Whether you're you know, a newer fan, an old school fan, you like high scoring, you like uh, physicality and toughness and all that stuff. Even the goaltending was good in that game, which you wouldn't think from a game that ended 5-4, but there were some good saves each way. And um, just a fantastic hockey game. And yeah, man, I mean, sign me up for uh, some more Rangers Flames this upcoming season. And then as far as uh, Ranger free agents are concerned, that that wraps up, obviously, the honorable mention portion. But I did want to mention uh, Ranger remaining free agents. It's good to do a little roll call every now and then. Uh, again, I don't anticipate any of these players being back, but just to run through it, uh, Lori Pahuniemi, he already informed the Rangers that he uh, will be playing overseas. He's an RFA, a restricted free agent. Everybody else on this list is a UFA. Uh, you got Libor Hayek, which, I mean, I, I doubt it, unless they're just looking for defenseman depth and they want to start him in Hartford. Uh, Yaroslav Halak, that's not going to happen. We've got Jonathan Quick. Patrick Kane, I mean, this is going to be an ongoing saga. I don't expect him to sign with anybody all that soon. Tyler Mott, would love to see him be back, but understandably so, it seems like he wants to go to, uh, you know, the highest bidder, and I'm just not sure the Rangers can be that team right now. And it seems like uh, Tyler Pitlick, in some ways, might be here to kind of take on the Tyler Mott role. Uh, we'll see how that shakes out. C.J. Smith, uh, he played with the Wolfpack last season. And Cooper Zek, same thing. But he was actually uh, the the throw-in on the Patrick Kane trade. You know, he came over, and he's now a UFA. So uh, somebody that could end up being just kind of a footnote in Ranger history. Again, I just named seven names. I don't really see any of them being back. Never say never. But, um, yeah, that's where things stand right now. 
I figure we could pretty much call it there for today. The only other thing I want to mention, I'm going to be on vacation from now until Labor Day, and that won't really affect anything because we're still doing just three episodes per week. I believe we're going back to five episodes per week sometime in the middle of September, which makes sense. You know, we've got the, the preseason approaching right around that time. Um, but yeah, not going to miss any episodes because it's the third episode of this week. And then we'll have three episodes next week as well. But just want to let you guys know if there's any like breaking Ranger news, which I don't expect, but you never know. You never know when a trade could happen. Uh, we'll wait until next week uh, to discuss that once I'm uh, back from vacation. But uh, that will do it for today, guys. Once again, if you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is LockedOnNYRangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, it's at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. Thanks again, guys. I will see you next time.